we sit down with Thomas Allen to find out what hunts we're drawing out for, what we hope to get, and mentoring youth and new hunters. All this on Gun Talk Hunt. Gun Talk Nation is brought to you by Pyramid Air, your number one resource for everything air guns, whether it's ammo, air gun pistols, air rifles, anything you need, they got it. Yep, even targets, and they even have CO2 to keep you loaded. But anyway, visit PyramidAir.com and enter code GUNTALKHUNT, all one word, for $10 off any $50 purchase, plus free shipping with any purchase of $150 or more. Find your next hunting partner at PyramidAir.com. All right, welcome into Gun Talk Hunt. I am your host, KJ, and joining me with me is a man that probably doesn't need introduction because he is so well known in the hunting woods, but uh, we'll give him an introduction here in a second. But Thomas Allen, just hold steady. I'm going to do these little sponsor reads. But uh, today's Gun Talk Hunt is brought to you by Remington. Ammo is back, and Remington is a big, big influence in that arena. Thank you for being back. It's also brought to you by ATN. You're basically owning the night with ATN. They're they're beautiful, and they are the future of optics. And Timney Triggers, yeah, I've got a lot of them, and uh, it improves your shooting greatly. So thank you, Timney Triggers. All right, Thomas Allen has been with us before. Uh he he dabbles in the fishing side just so he can get through his hunting obsession. Thomas Allen, welcome in. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Uh, I, dabble is a funny word. I do my best to pay my bills, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you're right. I do work in the fishing industry so that I can hunt in the fall and the spring. See, I got it it's backwards. A good way to live. I got it backwards, man. I, I sat there and, you know, because you and I originally met in the fishing industry. I mean, that's how, mm -hmm. how we got introduced to each other and we became lifelong friends and, uh, and hunting brothers. And now we're taking a trip a year. We're doing a trip of year and we are just days out, days out from finding out if we will be headed to Wyoming. I, I've been anxiously awaiting the results here. And I, I was going to ask you, but I kind of figured maybe you'd have a little like maybe a surprise, like tell me, hey, we drew your tags in the mail, but no, we're going to have to wait a little longer. Yeah, we yeah. got to wait. Just I'm going to go ahead and say it. Congratulations, Thomas Allen. We drew out for Wyoming. No, I don't know we did, but I have not. <laughs> I have yet to draw out. Like I have yet to not draw a buck tag for the unit that we hunt. Um, and you know what is, is really cool about this? Um, so we've talked about this Wyoming trip, and we've 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 hinted at it over the show and i've always told people if you have questions about this i'm an open book and and i think thomas allen is really the same we we look out for other hunters and we want to guide them as best we can almost to a fault honestly i mean it i is. i don't i don't mind uh i, I learned this from mike iconelli uh, well, i'm gonna lean on a, a, a former bassmaster elite series pro former classic champ yeah um, he always had time for the camera, always had time for fans. Yes. I think probably one of the best there is. Um, and I, th there was numerous times that I was interviewing him and I would ask him what he was doing and he would tell me on day one, day two, day three, exactly what he was doing and where <laughs> he was at. And I asked him, I said, Mike, why are you so willing to share this info right away? And he goes, well, it's, it's simple. Really. It's, it's, you still got to get out there and catch them. Yep. And so as, as easy as it is to disclose what, you know, maybe not secrets or insider information or, or, or cutting edge tactics, whatever the case may be, people still have to get out there and use them. And I think that I've learned over the years, the goodness of people supersedes those that want to take from you. Uh, yes. And I don't, and I don't mind sharing. I, I think that it's, it's good for people to be successful. It's it, easy to say, Hey, I'm a turkey hunter. I'm a fisherman. And it's easy for people to say, hey, it's not always about catching fish. It's not always about shooting turkeys. Yeah. The hell it's not. I mean, <laughs> that's exactly why you're out there. Let's be honest. You, so you I want people to succeed. You're right. And and I do want. And so so I throw my email out there. You know, I, I throw out, you know, kj at guntalk.com. If you ever want to get a hold of me just to ask questions, just to talk, just to bounce ideas off of uh, open up hunting lands for Thomas Allen, just feel free to reach out to me. Um, but, uh, 
but I, I threw it out there and we actually had, I actually had quite a few people, um, reach out and respond. And I, man, I laid it out. Like I had detailed the draw process. I detailed like when they needed to put into, and then I followed up with them like, Hey, don't forget, you know, June 1st is your deadline. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'll be danged if they didn't like, they didn't take me up on it. And so now like if we draw out that, I hope they draw out, I really do hope they draw out and we'll have some listeners to this show headed on that hunt. Oh, that's exciting. And so next, see, that's really the best part of, of the, the outdoor industry in general is just getting to meet people that have a similar interest and uh, having that opportunity to share camp or, or, or a boat with somebody that's, that's really where it's at. And, it's always been about the people, Kevin. It has yeah. been. And I, I, I hope that there's more people out there that are continuing to get involved in the outdoor industry, hunting or fishing, that have that mindset. Uh, and this is a, probably a discussion for another day, but I don't think we're where we used to be in that realm. I think it's no. become a lot more commercialized, and there's people that are more interested in making a paycheck than they are catching a bass. I'm not yeah. saying I've that's wrong. I've experienced that as changed. well. I've you experienced know? that well. And, and, you know, there are passionate people, um, and, and that love it. And I think, you know, we've got two of them here that, that, you know, having people succeed is, is my number one now. Like I, I just want people mm-hmm. to have fun and enjoy it. Um, That's right. and, and however they want to do it. I mean, you don't, you don't have to go out and just only archery hunt or you don't only have to go chasing turkeys or, or whatever it is, just as long as you're out there, man, and, and leave the land a little bit better than what you found it. Well, and, and you, you hit something there that, that is a, a topic I care a lot about. And, and I've met, I'm not going to name any names because it's not going to do me any good, but there are a <laughs> lot of people that hunt, especially turkeys, that believe you can only ethically do it a certain way. Now, <laughs> I, I agree with that to a point where maybe it's not so ethical to walk up to the roost tree in the morning and blast right. them out of the tree, but... I just, there's, there's an elitism that takes place in the outdoors and, and people think that their way of taking it is the most productive, the most ethical, the best way to do it. And, and you're less of a human, less of a hunter if you don't do it that way. And that what that does is it turns people away. And, and a lot of times those people are the most vocal in the group. Uh, and that agenda, unfortunately gets pushed down people's throats. And, and, and I, I don't care for that. And I, I a hundred percent agree with you. And I think we all kind of know where we're headed down this road. Um, which is actually not, again, it's not it usually Thomas Allen gets on here. We have a, an idea of where we want to go and it's so, uh, and we end up <laughs> way off the reservation. Um, That's right. but, um, I, you know, when they start, I, I got no problem with how you hunt. I, I don't, you know, just as long as it's within legal boundaries. Um, but what I find is that when people start attacking a certain, like, like let's take, you know, traditional bow hunters. Let's just, just as an example, don't, if you're a traditional bow hunter, I am one as well. Don't, don't get your panties in a bunch. Um, but you sit there and they say, well, you know, crossbows. No, you, you shouldn't do that. That's unethical. You're cheating the system. No, Mm -hmm. it's a slippery slope, right? Is what they like to say. Yes, it is a slippery slope. That is exactly what they say. And I'm, and then you start going, oh, well, you hunt with a gun. Well, you don't really need that AR-15 for for hunting purposes. Well, now I got a big problem with that. Mm-hmm. Like that When you start talking like, oh, well, I don't need a certain gun to do hunting activities with or shooting sports with, that's when I got a very big problem with it. Um, you're encringing on like, you know, you're, you're trying to silent my voice, and I don't like that. Well. You know, and here's the thing I remind myself of. We've all been there. We've been in a tree stand. Uh, it's the perfect evening. Things are coming together nicely. And all of a sudden, the neighbor guy decides to come out and start shooting rounds off uh, to the tune of, you know, a thousand bullets per minute or whatever the case may be. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's aggravating. And uh, a lot of times it you, you sit there and you judge the person. But then I've reminded myself of this. Uh, and and it's, I, could, I could give you an example of the fishing industry, too, where something similar has happened. But A... If the neighbor guy shoots his gun off like that, there's a good chance he does it regularly. The deer really don't care. They're going right. to continue to do the thing, or turkeys, or whatever. Uh, the second thing is, it's his right. He can do that. And so before I get too hot and bothered under the collar, I sit back and kind of chuckle and 
part of me is like, good for you, you know, burn the powder. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's his right to do that. Um, and maybe, maybe that person is super passionate about shooting her gun off at sunset on a perfect November evening. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing of it is we don't get to sit there and pass judgment on a person like that because a, he's exercising his rights and B, he may be passionate about it. So yeah. it, I, I just, I get real tired of people that point their bony finger at someone else and say, you're not a hunter if you don't do it my way. And, um, that's not what it's about. And, and this, honestly, this turkey season for me was another example of, it's not about me. Uh, it's about the people I get to hunt with. It's yep. about the people I get to meet along the way. And that's, uh, my, my memories this year are about turkeys, but they're more about the people I share the woods with. Gun Talk Hunt is also sponsored by Remington. Since 1939, hunters have relied upon Remington's cord-locked controlled expansion bullet. The tapered copper jacket is locked to a solid lead core, delivering massive two times expansion. So what does that mean? That means you are getting one bullet to expand to incredible widths to create a bigger wound channel. What does that mean? That means more meat on the table. So find out more about cord locks at remington.com. They, they talk about the stages of, of a hunter, like throughout your life. First, it's all about just getting a kill. And then it's about, you know, racking up the numbers and then you start to digress. And then you start in that trophy phase and then, mm-hmm. then you start from that trophy phase, once you get a couple under your belt, then you start to realize, and I think you and I are kind of in that same area, is you start to realize it's not about the chase. It's it's not about, I mean, it is. It's what we love to do. It's That's how it started. But it's about like sharing those moments with those around you and sharing those moments with people who don't really get to experience this every day. That's right. Or don't live it and... And, you know, that brings up a, a temperament issue. You have to tone back your intensity. Uh, I, I tend to be a little bit overbearing on, on both hunting and fishing. And, and no. it's not, I can't, <laughs> I can't, I can't expect my, my wife or my kids to be that intense about it. It's not their, it's probably my son's passion. I think you and I would agree. He's oh, hundred percent. Already headed down that road. Yeah. Um, he's, he's pretty well infected. Um, you know, his, uh, Thomas Allen's son, is is one of he's a very remarkable young man he's you know he's he does this stuff on his own like he seeks it out you know he seeks mm-hmm. knowledge elsewhere than you know the two old guys he has kind of leading him around well i i'm proud of him and uh i want to continue to nurture that but i have to nurture that at his level and that's right and my intensity has to be different with my daughter in the blind. Uh, it's not, <laughs> it's not the same. So, and especially my wife, you know, Oh uh, it, gosh, I bet there's, it, there's a story somewhere in there. There's got, Oh be. dude, dude, dude. I, I'll tell you a real quick one. There's a deer on my wall. I'm sitting 10 feet from it right now. And it's a regular reminder of the graciousness of my wife <laughs> and how I had to learn the hard way to not be such a prick in a tree stand. That's um, fair. the short of it is we, we were, probably three or four years married and we had permission on a cool piece of land in Iowa to deer hunt. She was bow hunting. I was bow hunting. Um, and this, we had just gotten in the tree at like three forty-five. uh, was a little later than I wanted to be. I forgot the video camera and the tree stand was eight feet off the ground. You know, it's just one of yeah. those unique situations. Um, and I'll shorten it as much as I can here, but a 160 inch deer within minutes of us being in the tree stand, walked into her shooting lane at seven yards and she didn't shoot. Oh gosh. Oh, I came unglued. Now there are probably <laughs> two sides of the story, two, two groups of people that would agree or disagree with me. I should not have gotten that angry. Uh, I did, but it was to this day, Kevin, it would be the biggest deer on my wall. Mid one sixties, but giant deer. Oh, but here's the deal. She, she said she had a branch in her way. I told her don't shoot unless you're comfortable. So, uh-huh. There's no reason for me to, she did what she was supposed to do, but she ended up throwing her bow out of the tree, um, <laughs> climbed down and walked home. How far away were you from home? Wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, well, there's a lot of questions I've got built up right now. <laughs> this One, is better to ask her. But. W- yes. One, what did you say to have her throw a bow? It's eight feet. 
throw her well, boat out of the stand. This is a family show. Let, let's just say I was I was learning what it meant to be a good husband in those days. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> she did. She tossed the boat. It worked just fine. There wasn't even a pin out of whack. <laughs> but uh, we were about a mile and a half from our house. And by the time I cooled down, got our gear picked up, and managed to get back to the truck, she'd actually beat me home, which... That, that ain't a good thing. No, no. Had I picked her up on the road or whatever, you know, that would have given us a chance to like face what had happened and whatever. But she made it all the way home. <laughs> so, I, I, I have a, a, so the hunt ended. Please yeah. tell me you did not keep hunting. No, no, I did not. I didn't have my bow. I was actually going to film her, but I forgot the camera like an idiot. But oh. The, the short and you're of it probably is, a little upset with yourself for forgetting that oh, to capture that sure. deer. Oh yeah, because I know Thomas for Allen, sure. and that camera is always with him. Yeah, well, and this listen, this was 2005. I mean, so this has been a long time ago. I was filming before it was cool. I really was. Uh, but anyway, so the next weekend we went out to the same tree stand, and she managed to arrow a very nice buck, uh, her first buck actually, and I got that on film, but. It, did, did you remind her that it wasn't the big one? Oh, we, we tell this story all the time. So yes, we, <laughs> I, I tell her that she goes, that deer grows every time we talk about it. I'm like, well, it was probably like a forked horn, like eight <laughs> no. point or something like that. It was a big one, but yes. And that's, that's, that's one of those experiences I'll, I'll, I'll I, I look back on and I don't, I don't want to say cherish, but I value because what? It has taught me to be a better hunter yeah. uh, or guide or assistant, whatever, for my kids. And we joke that I had to, I had to make all the mistakes with my wife, and, and I've done a better job with my children. But, but that's good, you know. but you learn how to – I mean, because each kid is not the same. Like, I have right. to approach both of mine very differently. As, mm-hmm. and, like, and you're talking about in the stand, like, how to approach your son and then how to approach your daughter and how to interact with them – to get them to make the right decisions. That's right. And, and it's, it's interesting how they react to, to certain situations. And, uh, part of it is, uh, my son cares so much about being successful that when he misses, he takes it very hard. He um, does. We, we went to Wisconsin turkey hunting this spring and it was, it's a long story again, but we managed to get a turkey in front of him, a gobbler after over an hour of working this bird and he missed. Um, and so we packed up and went back and had some lunch to regroup and he elected to stay at the house and not hunt that afternoon. <laughs> and oh. he told me, I just want to sit here and think about what I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he, he sat there so, stewing. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we made up for it. We came home with a pair of Jake's on the last hour of the last day of that hunt, but it was still knowing how hard he, t- he takes that. Yeah. I, I didn't fight him. I said, all right, that's what you want to do. My daughter, on the other hand, hasn't missed, so I don't know how she's going to take that. Oh, that's going to be a tough one. And I mean, she's shot a lot of critters. I mean, it's not she like has. it's not like she's you know shot one or two, but twelve turkeys and ten deer. I'm there. You go. I mean, and she hadn't missed yet, and that's boy. I I bet the sibling rivalry is ripe in that house. Oh, it it irritates her brother because she does have a tendency to have a, a horseshoe packed away somewhere. <laughs> Um, her and I, uh, we went and hunted with Jeremy this spring in Iowa and, uh, and she had a, a, she had to hunt a full day without shooting a turkey. And that was, I don't know that was aggravating for her. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> but just impatient, but it all, it all came to bet together and, and she actually ended up shooting the best bird of my, of my spring of her, of her life. It was a 26 pound turkey with two beards. Jeez. Um, and I think it had inch and, and eight spurs, so it was a, a nice three-year-old turkey and amazing video, and I, I can't wait to share it with you. But anyway, yeah, now, you kind of have to ha- temper how you work on that. Yes. Have we talked a little bit about your setup for turkey? Because I know we're at the end of turkey season, and I know there's, you know, but this might gear people up to, like, Thomas Allen looks at uh, his pack in for turkeys way different than i do well yes and and i i actually go prepared for a lot of scenarios and uh i'll be like all of them say yeah it's not for everybody and yes we've hunted together so you're not surprised by this but um here's the thing is is when i'm hunting with my kids my daughter's big enough now that she can carry a pack she can carry a chair she can carry her gun but that's really been the last year maybe last two 
Um, and Tommy is, is of that size and age now too, where he can, you know, handle his body weight in a backpack. And that's what we do here. We carry our body weight in a backpack. Um, but it's just been that way, you know, they're, they're young, they're small. And and I think what it stems back to is Taylor's first Turkey. Tommy wanted to go. And so I took both kids and they were five and seven. So they're little, Yeah, they're not able to carry much i had to bring food i had to bring something for them to do extra blankets for taylor and i as a videographer i missed one of the greatest hunts i've ever been able to witness and i i didn't miss it i watched it i experienced it it right. was fantastic but i wasn't able to film it because i had to carry a blind two chairs food three chairs because <laughs> i was going to sit in something decoys you know this, this whole scenario of just junk i mean you know how it goes so, oh yeah the bottom line is in recent years, I've, I've developed a, a turkey cart and I didn't develop anything other than I bought a Fording Clay's uh, gun cart. Um, I, I, I'm trying that, to remember the company that builds them, but it's, it's a super handy deal where I can put a blind in there. I can put three or four chairs in there. Um, I can put turkey decoys and use bungee cords to strap it to the frame. And dude, I can push this cart so, across the field and get to where I need to be. So you're using a turkey, like a, a cart. I mean, it's like a, you know, like a sporting clays cart. Like guys put their it, shotguns in, like in. It's like a stroller for my turkey gear. <laughs> you're pushing a stroller. Okay. That's all we need to know. Yeah. You're with with my soccer mom camera on the back. Into, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> geez. Well, and, and, and there are situations where it doesn't work, but yeah, for the most part, if I'm, if I'm uh uh, if I'm walking down a logging road, getting to a particular place where we're going to set up, if I'm going across an alfalfa field, yeah, um, there's a lot of instances where it has totally saved our bacon. Where I, oh yeah, I don't want to have to carry that. Yeah, so it's 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 the whole hunt smarter, not harder. Yeah, and you know we we've, we've talked an awful lot about what I've done with with my my setup, my pack in, and all this and that, but really, you just fit to the scenario uh you know i do yeah. like to shoot turkeys out of a blind unapologetically i don't mind doing that but uh this year i reaped a turkey with with our friend jeremy where we snuck on our bellies in on a, a short alfalfa field behind a um uh, behind a uh a turkey decoy strutter decoy so there, there's there's a time for that um there's also a time to leave everything at the truck and just take a turkey call in your shotgun and um, one of my better friends, uh, Ryan brought his son up to hunt with me this spring. They kind of were struggling on the property they had yeah. in Southern Minnesota. And, uh, we ended up, uh, sneaking through a, a knee deep swamp oh, to get in position and laid in our, laid on our bellies in some thick infest or tick infested grass. That sounds uh, fun. Hey, oh, what? Go hunting. It, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Just well, don't, you know what? It, they, the ticks are gross. Nobody likes ticks. Yeah. But the bottom well, line is, you have all of these these factors, you know, that play yeah. into the experience, and that was it. So, yeah. Well, the the ticks that are really bad are the ones that make you allergic to meat. I, I know. Can really, you imagine? I could not imagine. I, you know what? I think at that point, I would probably say, you know what? I'm just I'm good with it. <laughs> like I'm just gonna like carry an EpiPen with me wherever I go. I'm gonna eat meat. I'm gonna go to those uh, Brazilian steak houses, have a nice meal. And we'll, I would probably lose some weight. I'm not oh, yeah. going to lie to you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know what? I mean, this is this is all great information, and I know folks are, like, sticking to every word we are saying right now. Oh, and we sure. are going to pick this episode up next week because we are going to talk about what you need to prepare for next season. Like What needs to go in your pack, where you're headed, and what you're going to be doing but thank you so much for listening to This Gun Talk Hunt with Thomas Allen. Join back next week because we got a special episode all about packs. Well, hey, and in the interim, Kevin, I'm about to send you a big, long feature full of photos and videos that are going to outline our turkey season and how it works. So Perfect. that's going to be on your See? website as well. See, we got that coming down the pipe as well. But stick around because we're going to be back next week with Thomas Allen talking hunting packs and hunting gear. 